What common foods in your country are considered delicacies by foreigners? But, olive oil. Oh it's so difficult living anywhere else when you come from an olive oil country. Like apparently most people are okay with shoddy olive oil that looks like beer and doesn't smell like olives at all. Olive oil production is so corrupt it's almost impossible if you air and local to a source. They've even tested the high-end brands and found them to be blended oils for a large percentage. Goji berries. We put that stuff in our soups and many people pick that out when they drink the soup. They are expensive in non-Asian shops in America. I think I saw them for like $20.30 a pound. I worked for a charity in Iraq for a year and we'd buy a dozen lamb chops for the equivalent of $5. That's like $60 to buy in the US and it's worse quality. Us lamb always seems lower quality than other countries. What's up with that? It was supposed to be caviar. But now it's also unaffordable for us cries in Russian. I used to eat caviar all the time as a cheap snack growing up moderately poor. Romanian. I was stunned to find out it's a delicacy. My wife ate herring roe as a kid. Now it's a delicacy. I was thinking caviar in Iran. But I don't know if it's true still. A lot of sturgeon species in Eurasia are endangered from overfishing and habitat destruction. HMM. Forest berries perhaps. I live in Finland. We have a lot of forests, so lot of berries such as blueberries and lingonberries. Every man's rights mean that you can just go and pick as much as you can find. It's kinda one of those things where if you live near any forested area, and are willing to spend time there come late summer, you'll probably have enough to last until next year in your freezer. We have so much berries that people from poorer countries, Thailand is a common one for some reason, are hired to pick them up. Because doing berry picking enough to actually profit monetarily is heavy work, and apparently the pay isn't worth it for most Finns. At the same time, forest berries are considered a superfood around the world, very healthy and trendy, don't know about actual delicacy status, but definitely a difference in how we think about them. I would add mushrooms for Finland, especially porcinus, hercutati, chanterelles, cantarelli, and c. tuberformis. Sapilava vero, are incredible food mushrooms which are sought after for example. In Italy, we can just go pick them in the forest thanks to our jock Amy Hanoikius, every man's right, which allows anyone to pick mushrooms and berries etc. On public land such as state-owned forests, lingonberries and cloudberries are berries that I love that you can't get outside of Scandinavia. Literally the only place you can get them is the IKEA food mart. Both also grow in northern North America actually. In Newfoundland, for example, both are abundant, there they are colloquially known as partridge berry and back eepal, respectively. Englishman here, been scrolling for so long to find my country, maybe some stereotypes are true, sorry, man, you can keep your jelly deals lol. Jamon Serrano, here in Spain is really common and you can find very good product for a very affordable price, Jamon Serrano is cool. But the real delicacy is Jamonai Bay Ricotti Belota. 100 grams was about $15 cad last time I was in Spain. Whereas in Canada the equivalent is about $60.80 cad for 100 grams. Crane worst or Carniolan sausage. Protected by EU for being Slovenian speciality that can only be made here but loved and eaten by millions of Germans and Austrians. It took me why to long to recognize this food because I know it as coarse Craner. D. Avocados here in Mexico, pretty common and cheap, yet my wife's from Mexico and every time we go to the grocery store here in the US she comments on how ridiculously expensive avocados here. Bear those Mexican avocados are even more expensive here in Tokyo and super popular. I spent 3 months in your wonderful country 10 years ago and I still am disappointed when I eat an avocado or a mango here. It's just not like the ones in Mexico. Yeah I always thought papa was disgusting and tasted like this warm beer until I ate one in Mexico. I can never get that real taste out of my mind. I think that it's mainly due to our climate. Maybe it's good for the fruits. Hawaii has somehow turned spam into a sought after food. Especially by visitors from Japan. You. I'm Filipino. And I grew up on spam and rice. When I went to Hawaii. I hadn't ate it in so long. I basically sat in the hot sun eating spam and rice for two weeks straight. Breakfast only. I've only ever met two types of Pacific Islanders in my life. 1. Eats spam and rice all the time. Is absolutely shredded. 
a pure Adonis of man-woman, too, eats spam and rice all the time, got briefly injured at some point in the past and stopped being able to exercise every day and is now massive, is still somehow 50 times stronger than me, did you know they make a Tocino spam variety, produced in my home state of Minnesota, weird world we live in, spam musubi is pretty good though. Stroopwiffle, literally had pre-packaged ones on an airplane and they were still good, that's the first place I ever had one, it was so insanely good I looked them up, finally got a pack at Costco, it was even better, now I have to get a fresh one, those things are bourbon caramel laced coke discs, I literally have banned myself from buying them, because I've cleared the shelf at the store, only to eat them all in a week like a fatty, other people have to buy them for me, because they'll buy them in moderation, I literally gave up coke, only to fall into an addiction for stroopwiffles or as I call them, devil discs, s, you haven't had stroopwiffle until you've bought one freshly pressed from a street vendor, with the syrup still warm and runny. We had some Japanese exchange students at our university in the US, and when they saw the cube melon on the salad bar, the standard watermelon cantaloupe honeydew mix, they thought we were living like royalty, apparently melon is a really expensive, special occasion food over there, I heard that the first melons in Japan are sold for thousands of dollars, and then the price settles at about 50 stroke 60 dollar. Yup I saw a cantaloupe go for like $10,000 because of how perfect it looked or something. I don't know but they take some of that fruit serious. Fruits in general. Grapes were a treat when I lived there because they were about 16 US dollars a bunch and not as abundant as the grapes we get here. Apples were the cheapest at like 3 US dollars. They have pretty strict importing laws in Japan as well. Kinda bad geographically for everything including farming. With the little space they have, they decide to go for quality instead of quantity. I worked for a Chinese company in Ecuador and used to live among Chinese employees. They would have watermelon as dessert after lunch literally every day. IDK if that's related but always seemed interesting to me. From Hong Kong we like fruit for dessert, among other things. A lot of restaurants will give you free oranges or melon after the table's cleared. Fancy restaurants might do fancy fruit platters. Fancy Japanese restaurants will have the option of a slice of extremely expensive Japanese melon. Morel mushrooms. I never had them though. I'm a mushroom hunter and let me tell you. No other mushroom compares. My favorite way to make them is, after cleaning them, is to roll them in flour while wet. Fried in a mixture of oil and butter and lightly salted. Oh man. My favorite camp food. And I only have a two week window in the year to do it. Brook trout. Morels. Ramps and wild asparagus cooked over a campfire in a cast iron skillet. Pure Michigan. Tumtums. My brother played the meanest joke ever by bringing these home from Australia. Can't find anything like it in NY. When we were in Illinois we found them at Target of all places. If you have a Trader Joe's near you, in the US, they have something very similar to this that they just started carrying. They are called Aussie style chocolate cream sandwich cookies coated in chocolate. Good luck finding them though. That sounds like the kind of thing Trader Joe's would do all mayo. I was going to post I don't think we have anything in us that others would consider a delicacy. Thanks for telling me I was wrong. $58 NZD from Amazon for 4 packs. Wow. They are only like 3-4 NZD locally. My brother went to Australia and brought back Tim Tim's. Tihei were the greatest thing ever, he taught me how to nibble off both ends, and use it as a super wide straw in a glass of milk to make the milk all chocolatey, then you eat the Tim Tim and it's a soft gooey chocolatey bit of heaven, I love it, the Olay Tim Tim Slam, nice. Water, our tap water is perfect and no local ever buys bottled, Iceland, our dam, in Canada and I'm pretty sure elsewhere too, Coca Cola and Pepsi and certainly Nestle. Bottle the tap water and sell them for and lot of idiots buy the 24 bottle crate for when on the bottle it's written tap water from. I hate Darsani and others. Yep it's definitely sold here too. But for some reason the bottles all say Icelandic spring glacial water in English and not Icelandic. Gotta squeeze every penny out of the tourists. Michigan locals. 25% have been boycotting Nestle for draining our aquifers for the past 3 decades while Flint goes ham on water. A good baguette, I've seen American tourist walk out of a bakery with like 12 of them, slow down dude, they are made all day long, you don't need that many, 
It's just the guy from the math problems. The world is desperate to know how many he has left. If he eats 4 baguettes on the way to the train station, how fat does he get? Yep, straight out of the oven is the best. You don't need that many. We're American. We must have 1 kilogram of carbs every 8 hours or we get kicked out of the country. 1 kilogram. He's an imposter. We must have 1 kilogram of carbs every 8 hours or we get kicked out of the country. Unless you let everyone know you're doing Kato. Then you need to eat a stick of Karagold every day or you get kicked out. Pose a no true American would say KG. Reindeer meat. Wild blueberries and cloud berries. Cloud berries. Are we thinking about the same berry? Small. Yellow. Grows in bogs. Also called malt. And is so damn sought after that all laws regarding freedom to pick berries wherever you like just go right out the window because people are that possessive of them, like maybe they're not as luxurious as some places make them out to be, but they are still pretty damn special. Yes, same berries. And yeah, people protect information of best berry picking places like its location of holy grail. Cloudberries drools my friend is finished and when his granny makes cloudberry jam for us all it makes me so happy. French here so, a lot of our food, if there's one thing we know how to do, it's exporting our food as fancy delicacies. The truth is, apart from pastries desserts which can be pretty complicated to put together, the effort to make even just 12 croissants, most French food is just peasant stuff spruced up for the modern times. The logic is almost always, take a cheapish cut of meat. Cook it either in wine or in broth for a few hours with a bunch of onions and whatever herbs grow nearby. Add carrots, potatoes. Enjoy. That's the basis for beauf borguignon. Cock a uvin. Gigo dino. Hot a ufu. Blanquette divo. Etc. If you want to get fancy you can wrap it in pastry. And that's another dozen French specialties right there. There's not really a way to F it up. Really. It's meat. Cooked at low heat over several hours with a bunch of aromatic herbs. As long as you've got a sturdy pot and you don't let it dry, you'll get something in the range from edible to delicious. I think a lot of this has to do with the French really taking over fancy dining at the beginning of the 20th century. I mean Escoffier literally wrote the book and then every culinary school taught French cooking almost exclusively for decades after, but that's just my theory. Durian. The number of durian farmers who have found overnight wealth are astonishing due to export demand. Durian is so polarizing. Seems like you either love it or hate it. In Melbourne, they evacuated a whole university thinking there was a gas leak. Turned out someone had eaten durian and thrown the remains in a garbage can. That almost happened when we were eating durian at the Anu. But a wise and experienced person went around knocking on doors to check if anyone had durian before they called in a gas leak. It was us. Crisis averted. Deliciousness achieved. Maybe it's just the part of Canada I live in. BC. But none of the frozen durian will ever satisfy the real stuff back in Malaysia. Especially when you get into the varieties like Mirzanking, D24, Red Prawn ETC. It's an acquired taste for sure but you do get used to it if you mostly grew up eating it. I know some Malaysian friends who don't like durian even when they were kids. Hence mostly, I tried it in Singapore and was amazed that people could actually eat it, let alone enjoy it. It smells like an organic chemistry lab. This is probably the most vivid I've ever heard its smell described. I'm good off that. I'm from Russia and I had an acquaintance who was going to marry an Irish guy. They lived in Russia for some time the guy went completely bonkers for caviar of capelin fish. It's not really a delicacy. It's not rare or expensive at all. Probably approx $2.50 3 a can. But he liked it so much he wanted to bring a crate of it for their wedding in Europe. Needless to say his soon to be wife wife was not amused. Imagine wanting to bring a crate of peanut butter or something to your wedding. Do maple syrup or pouting count? I know at the least. In university I had a friend who came up from the US and thought pouting was the greatest thing ever. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised more of the US hasn't adopted it. Fries cheese curds, and gravy. Sounds more like an American thing. Not sure what other countries' opinions on it are. I, American, have lived between 85 kilometers and 100 kilometers from the Canadian border my entire life, yet somehow I had no idea Poutine was a thing until I was nearly 30. I learned about it online. If it redeems me at all, I did help to tap a sugar maple tree when I was 8 lol. 
I always wonder what other fun foods I'm still oblivious about. I didn't even know cheese curds were a thing until the 2010s. I once went to WI and their minds were blown when I asked um, cheese curds? Those lumps that float in the way, on a menu, fried, but why? Dart and how? Lol I've never had so many strangers excited to buy me cheese. In my defense, I was picturing cottage cheese. What other delicious local treats are you hiding? America? I've never had so many strangers excited to buy me cheese. This is my new favorite sentence. Wait did someone get you some fresh, squeaky curds? I'm in the states. I'm seeing more places serve poutine but it's a pretty bastardized version of what I had in Canada. Still good though, hard to f up fries, gravy and cheese. Last time I went to the states, I would cry a little when I'd see a poutine made with grated American cheese melted on top of it. Good French pastries and stuff like croissant and pain au chocolate. We call them vinoiserie in French. No idea if there is a specific word for it in English. Obviously in France they are super easy to find in any bakery and they are cheaper. It's so common that honestly not a lot of people do go buy some croissants every day. Macarons are also relatively easy to find. Usually they are made in special shops but some bakery do make them. An Indian prepared badge on MasterChef Australia. Badge is available at every 5 blocks or so. The whole recipe is cut onion potato. Coat it with gram flour and spice and fry. Indians who saw that surely laughed. In South Indian states bhaji is called bhaji. You can make bhaji in a hostel room. IDK man it's good sh master chef or not. Especially if it's done by a neighborhood mom grandma. Once encountered an NHS nurse back sale and the moms there had brought their homemade samosas and bhaji. And it utterly spoiled me from having the stuff from anywhere else. Those ladies made the hell out of their bhaji and you could tell they had slow cooked the onions to make them sweet and savory. It's so good though. There are a number of ways to f up a simple thing like bhaji. It can be too greasy or in big clumps. Or not seasoned properly. When you find really good bhaji, it's a joy. Especially if they also make an excellent tamarind sauce. Any kind of sheep meat, lamb, mutton, etc. In non-sheep countries it can be quite expensive. Here it is the cheapest meat and commonly used instead of pork as the filler meat in grocery store products such as sausages. Also, fresh fish the fish processing time is pretty short here, with fish instantly getting unloaded and sent to factories after the boats arrive, and then quickly processed and sold to consumers so that the fish is even fresher than in some other seaside countries. Jesus Christ this entire thread is teaching me about cravings for food I've never even heard of or know how to pronounce correctly. Carry on everyone. I'll be right here salivating. Pina colitis I guess. Here in PR you can get them absolutely everywhere with or without alcohol. It's mostly just a refreshing drink. In Mexico many local ice cream stores serve it as agua fresca. Flavored beverage with a ton of sugar and ice for those foreign to the language. Back in high school some acquaintances of mine would buy a 1L cup, drink some of it and then add some bacardi to the mix for a full pina colada experience. It tasted nice. To be fair, yo, the fresh made drinks without bullsh syrups are amazing but mofongo is the low-key luxury food that makes me want to go back to PR. Arque legs delicacies? Because I could just buy them at a grocery store here like normal eggs but I rarely ever hear of them anywhere else. As Italian living in Germany I can say that basically every food from my culture is considered fancy here. A couple of days ago I saw an Arancino cheap fried rice cake sold for 5 euros. In Italy a good Arancino is 1 euro. I have this pleasant feeling that Italians are confident they got food right and don't need to change it or import much from elsewhere. Whenever I've been to Italy I find restaurants all selling largely the same stuff. But it's somehow all you ever need. You can stay there for a week or two and never get bored of it. You have your pasta, pizza, coffee and ice cream. What more do you need? No Starbucks. And minimal fast food outlets. While there are non-Italian restaurants, they don't dominate in the same way they do in other countries. God, I need to go back soon. In my experience a lot of common everyday French foods are high in specialty foods here in the US, in France. Every corner store I went to sold the type of cheese, charcuterie, and pate that you'd have to go to Whole Foods for here, and it isn't particularly expensive. It's just normal food, like I went to a little grocer in Paris and got pieces of four different cheeses, and I thought, this is going to be like $28, 
No, it was like $6. I'm just used to what Whole Foods charges. I went to a big department store in the Paris suburbs and there was just an aisle that had all the dry cured ham and such and tins of pate, laid out as casually as Lunchables in the US. It's just regular food. Whole Foods also tries to sell flavored seltzers and onion powder as specialty foods. Microba has a pretty extensive cheese selection for normal prices. $5 to $10 per pound. Denver tap water is sold around the world as Coors Light. Halami cheese. It's a huge staple in Cyprus and we eat it all the times but in the US I only ever see it as barbacks and sometimes at exotic cheese plates. Pheasant. I grew up in South Dakota and we hunted pheasants every day during the season. In college it was a cheap source of food and ate it all the time. In Central and South American countries it is a delicacy and people could not believe I ate it every day. Every single time I was served pheasant growing up I was warned to watch out for bird shot pellets in the meat just in case they got missed during processing. I had family that would hunt in South Dakota every year and their freezer was always so full of game meat they had to give it away before hunting trips. Might be a delicacy elsewhere but here we served it swimming in cream of mushroom soup over mashed potatoes or wild rice. Always a great comfort food. Fijoda. In its core it's working class food. Though usually a fancier version is considered a delicacy. And it's rarely as good as the real thing BTW. Also those are not as known but when I lived abroad I blew people's mind with Powdy Quijo and Brigaduro. Which are incredibly common and easy to make. Crawfish et au fee. Fried plantains. Or mafongo. Which is just more fried plantains mashed with garlic and some bees toppings. Not just my country but my locality, scallops. Buckfast, it's made from grapes so technically a food. Butter chicken, as an Indian staying in Europe, I hate butter chicken because it has taken over Indian cuisine in Europe and no one wants to try the real stuff. Gilius in Hungary is a common soup dish, but for other countries it is uncommon. For the non-Hungarians gulias is goulash. Fried chicken. It's actually become a special holiday meal in countries like Japan where you have to reserve your bucket weeks in advance, mainly because of clever marketing, but here, people would laugh so hard at that, cause it's just fried chicken, it's not as straightforward as that, it's KFC specifically, in the 70s KFC did a heavy marketing campaign and pretty much told Japan that everyone eats KFC at Christmas in the west, the tradition set and even though now KFC is everywhere. There's still a special place for it at Christmas. Yes you do book ahead, but it isn't a three-piece, two-wing meal. It's a special menu featuring a whole chicken, mashed potatoes, and a cheesecake. So yeah it's not like fried chicken is amazingly special. They aren't wrong though. Fried chicken is amazing, but this isn't like home style. Buttermilk. Perfectly crisp gloriousness. KFC is where so many Japanese people go for Christmas dinner. Carnitas. Literally something I see prepared on the side of the street every day. Prosciutto. Like, it's just ham. Guys, no biggie. Have you been to Spain? They live for Jamin Serrano, the Spanish version of prosciutto. I live in Japan but I'm from the US. Whenever I go back home I buy a few bags of Lind chocolates from the drugstore as souvenirs. They're dirt cheap in the US. But for whatever reason they're a luxury chocolate in Japan. And the same bags would cost $30 here. Kofta. It's so simple to make. You need ground beef and tons of spices and cook them in the grill or BBQ. Speculus speculus biscoff cookies. Delicacy might be a big word but people seem to lose their minds over these cookies. I've had American friends ask me to send over Cadbury chocolate. Imo it's not as nice as it used to be since it was bought out by Kraft. The irony. But people still go nuts for it. Depending on where in the US you live, lobster, king crab, dungeness crab, abalone, spotted prawns, geoduck, etc. can be pretty cheap. Normal food but for foreigners they go nuts over these things because they are so expensive elsewhere. I used to get an octopus tentacle on a stick as a cheap after school snack. Once, on an episode of Modern Family. Mitchell carried a huge poutine in a pretty glass casserole dish to the dinner table and announced that he'd made poutine, a Canadian delicacy. First time I'd ever heard it described as that. Poutine is drunk or junk food. I honestly think it was used because the punchline was well I'm not poutingy that in my mouth. 
especially in my region it's called blood worst roughly translated as blood sausage or black pudding and I hate it. My grandmother used to do fried black pudding on toast and it was magical.